Hey, how's it going? It's me, Hayden, filming another music production tutorial for Phoenix Music. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you my top 10 producer tips. So, um, yeah, if you find anything in today's tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like down below, feel free to suggest a music production tutorial in the comments, and share this video if you have any producer friends. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so first tip which is a EQ trick actually so um I'll quickly get an EQ up so this is a trick that I use in pretty much all my tracks which is uh being able to change the settings on the EQ so you're only EQ in mono frequencies or you're only EQ in stereo frequencies so how you do that is you go here you go down to here at the moment it's set to only eq mono frequencies so if i was to do that all the low end would be in stereo um and then i can also click here now it's in stereo so if i do this now the low end's completely in mono so um yeah if i just show you what that sounds like so we've got a hoof bass here, nice and wide. Now listen when I bring this up. See, you're only EQing stereo frequencies now. So if you wanted to have the top of the bass wide and the bottom of the bass mono, then you could just bring this to about here. Now your low end's in mono and your high end still in stereo. So yeah, uh, I thought that was a cool trick, so I'll just show you that one. Okay, moving on. So the next trick I wanted to show you is um, saturation, because uh, I've known a lot of uh, beginner producers not know about saturation. Um, but it's one of the most useful plugins, I guess, that you could have. Uh, and I'll show you why. So here we have a sub bass. Then if we add some saturation. Without the saturation. With the saturation. So what that's doing is that it's adding a slight bit of distortion to your sub bass uh, which is bringing up some of your tonal frequencies meaning that if your sub bass isn't translating well to certain sound systems putting saturation on it is going to bring up the tonal frequencies meaning it will be easier to hear the mids and stuff meaning it will sound better on those sound systems it originally didn't sound good on so uh, yeah you can also put saturation on uh, claps leads uh, maybe even some chords, just play around with it, I guess. Okay, moving on. Okay, so next tip is how to EQ a kick drum. So you might have seen me do this in some of the other tutorials. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to want to listen for the loudest peaking frequency in the kick drum and bring it down in volume. So if we search for it now, Right about there is probably the frequency. So then you're going to want to bring that down in volume. Then you can also boost a little bit of the highs if you want. And yeah. So that's going to help fix your mix in terms of, you know when you're kicking the sub bass uh, playing together and you're getting that nasty, rumbly, distorted kind of thing in the background. That's really awkward to get rid of. This will help get rid of that. Um, because uh, you're bringing down a frequency that's potentially going to fight with certain sounds so it will make your mix a lot cleaner okay moving on so the next trick is a piano trick which is how to make your piano sound more realistic i guess that's what you would call it um so basically if i put in a piano chord quickly just like this 
we now have an A minor chord. But it might sound a bit robotic. Uh, so what you can do to make it sound more realistic is you can bring some of the notes away like this slightly so they're a little bit late. It's very subtle, you might not notice it, but it will make it more realistic because when you're actually playing the piano, not every note is going to uh, make a sound at exactly the same time because your fingers might touch a split second later and things like that. So by doing it like this, it will make it sound more realistic. So yeah. I recommend doing this with your piano chords uh, just to get a little bit of extra realism in your tracks. Okay, moving on. So the next tip is how to get a bit of extra rhythm in your drums. Uh, the technique is called shifting your drums or if you're a drummer you'd probably call it a flam. Uh, but basically you can move your drums a little bit early like this. I'm going to move the claps. I wouldn't recommend doing it to the kicks, but other things you can do it to. Uh, ideally the claps, it always works best with the claps. So something like this. So now if we play it, you can hear it's kind of got a bit of a shifted sound. Maybe that's a bit too much though, maybe to about here. Yeah, so you can kind of hear what that's doing. Uh, you can also do it a little bit past the kick drum instead of before if you want. I prefer doing it a little bit before instead of a little bit after, but you can do whichever way you want. Um, so yeah, that's how you get a little bit of extra rhythm in your drums. Okay, moving on. So the next tip is how to change the settings on your uh, digital audio workstation grid. So what I mean by that is if we come into here at the moment this is what our grid looks like but you can click you can right click um, and then here you've got different settings the one I'm going to be showing you is triplet grid. So triplet grid is where you change it to three beats per bar instead of four beats per bar. So um, Yeah, so now you get that triplet vibe. If I play it with the metronome. Um, I'll make the notes a little bit shorter. So yeah, that's a completely different rhythm to if we was to do it like this. <laughs> so yeah, um, some songs that use this kind of uh, grid are uh, Tsunami, so uh, yeah, it's a commonly used grid, so I recommend start using it if you haven't already. Okay, moving on. So the next tip is another EQing trick. This one is how to EQ your bass. So what a lot of people don't know is you're supposed to EQ about 30, 35, 36 hertz from the low end off of your sub or your bass, depending on what kind of genre you're doing. Um, because all that down there is just rumble and that's going to be uh, fighting your kick drum. So uh, just removing that little bit right down the bottom here is going to make it a lot easier to mix your kick and sub together. Uh, so yeah, um, if you haven't already, start using this little EQing trick on your sub bases. Okay, moving on. So the next tip is how to do those uh, reversed things you hear in a lot of EDM. So what you're going to want is you're going to want some kind of 
pluck sound would probably be best. You can use whatever sound you want really, but I'm going to use a pluck. Then you're going to want to add loads of reverb to it. Like, about this amount. Then we're going to record one note. Um, I'll quickly put it here. Then you'll go into want to right click on here, freeze the track, and then flatten it. Now you've converted it into audio from MIDI. Now you can uh, cut a little bit here. This is where the note is playing, so I don't need that bit, I just need the tail. So now we have this. And then when you have that, maybe bring it up a little bit in volume, just hit reverse. And then uh, you can literally just do this and then maybe have it reverse back down the other way on the other end. So then you have something like this. So yeah, uh, okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, so the next tip is going to be OTT. You've probably heard of this before. Basically what it is, it's a compressor, but it compresses your frequencies separately. So your lows, your mids, and your highs are all compressed separately. So if I play this drum beat, and I'll show you what I mean. So yeah, this is your lows down here, your mids here and your highs here. So if you do this, now your lows are being really compressed, but your mids and your highs are staying the same. Um, and the same, you can turn this one up. So you're really compressing the highs, but keeping the mids and the lows the same. And yeah, I'll show you what it sounds like without the OTT with the OTT so yeah if you want to uh, get your track to be more balanced um, start using some OTT in my opinion it's uh, better than normal compression because normal compression is just going to compress the whole thing but this you can be more specific on what frequencies you want to compress. So if you think the kick drum's fine, but you want to bring down the highs a little bit, then you can do it with the OTT. So yeah, moving on. So the final tip is going to be how to do automated panning in order to get that uh, glitchy stutter effect that you hear in like a lot of future house and stuff. Um, so here we've got a reverse clap tail then what we can do is we can zoom in a bit and then we want to draw our shape to look something like this. This might be too fast. Yeah, it's a bit fast. Let's zoom in a bit. I mean, out a bit. <laughs> so let's do a bit here, a bit here, a bit here, a bit here. And then you just keep doing it like this. Yeah, so you can kind of hear what that's doing. So you've probably heard that effect uh, loads of times if you listen to a lot of EDM. So yeah, start using this uh, in your percussion to get a kind of groovy vibe on the go. So um, yeah, these have been my top 10 producer tips. If you found anything in today's video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, drop a like down below, feel free to suggest a music production tutorial in the comments, and uh, share this video if you have any producer friends. So I'll see you in the next video.